Hello people, uh, this is another video about um, investing and bitcoins, the permanent portfolio uh, and basically uh, the art of investing. Of course I feel really good today uh, the past uh, month uh, because my returns are exceptionally well um, but I think um, it's uh, of course there's luck involved I'm partly lucky, but also um, I think uh, it's also showing uh, the results of my hard work uh, over the past few years and my uh, um, wise the wise decisions I have made. And uh, I'd like to share uh, that with you, how I did that uh, and uh, how I am uh, planning to even do a lot better in the future. So today my portfolio has a total return for 2013 of 100% thanks to Bitcoin. Bitcoin currently being at $380 on Bitstamp uh, coming from uh, around uh, basically a low of 65 uh, two months ago. Um, then you had the Silk Road clamp down where it went up to around $130 then the Silk Road clamp down um, uh, and bef I made uh, my last videos were actually right before the Silk Road clamp down. So the price was then around 120, 130. Uh, I advised to buy uh, if the price would correct to 100, which actually happened. It corrected to 85, but very shortly because it immediately shut up again. So indeed, you had to have your fiat ready on the exchange to buy, as I as I have also. Um, said to some people um, but not on the video so yeah I think if you followed my advice you did not have an opportunity to buy because I thought the chances were high that the price would go to $60 and stay there for a while um, but I have also always advised to buy half of the bitcoins immediately because you never know with Bitcoin and I have done the same myself. Huh? So I haven't bought, I, I have sold half my Bitcoins. I'm still okay with that because I really wanted to lock in some profits I made with Bitcoin. But of course, with uh, looking in the rear window, uh, I, uh, I would have preferred to have sold less Bitcoins. Uh, but um, okay, that's what's happened and still I have half remaining and those have tripled in value uh, the last month, two months. Hmm. So thanks to that my total return is now 100% for the year. Uh, even though all my other investments uh, being uh, a speculative position in gold and silver down 20% for the year and even the permanent portfolio down around 4-3% this year 2013. We are already middle November, so only one month and a half to go. Uh, but um, yeah, I think it's clear. My average return uh, is 18 percent since 2008. 2008 included, where I also had a loss of 10 percent, uh, like many other investors. But that means that my average return of 18 percent per year, uh, yeah, it's extremely well. Uh, it is more than the top investors in the world, such as Warren Buffett, uh, Ray Dalio, um, Huge Andre, uh, Roland Van Damme here in Belgium. Uh, all of all of them, uh, none of them have uh, more than 18 percent per year. Of course, compared to Bitcoiners and entrepreneurs. Uh, my performance is uh, uh, a v <laughs> a very tiny, eh? so, or not all entrepreneurs, but some entrepreneurs and some investors have greatly outperformed myself. Eh? So, um, uh, so, um, but what to do for the future? That's always the question. Uh, I think uh, Bitcoin. Uh, is actually I've been wrong about Bitcoin. Uh, I did not. Exp I said before that chances that Bitcoin would like touch the all-time high from uh, at the start of the year 
in April when it hit 266. Last time we made a video around $130. I thought, uh, estimated, that chances for Bitcoin to go uh, to, 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 to already beat the all time high in 2013 was very low. Huh? Uh, and, uh, and actually it happened already one month later and then today it's, it's not 266, it's not uh, 366, it's almost 400. So um, I've been very wrong and uh, it made me realize that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we are indeed in an S-curve uh, with, with Bitcoin. That means that the growth huh, uh, goes like this, so in the beginning. Huh, you have slow growth, but then uh, and early adopters, but then institutional investors uh, come in. Um, but also, like adoption, like uh, the percentage uh, increase goes faster and faster. In the beginning, let's say you have an increase of, I don't know, just throwing some numbers here of 100% per year, but then it just starts to go up. It's not 100% per year, it's only 200% per year, 300% per year, and then you have uh, a line where it's constant, it's like every year 300%, let's say, and then it, it goes like that. I will put a link uh, in, the, in, the, in the about section about this YouTube video uh, for another great video about that. But basically, uh, I expected that the percentage increase in adoption and price would go down over time, but the inverse is true, it goes up over time. So, the current price of $380, uh, I think, uh, will not uh, uh, correct to uh, low values of $60. Today, I think the chance is very low that we will uh, ever see that price again. Um, I think um, today that, um, yeah, uh, what we are seeing is uh, uh, just a, a faster increase of adoption. Um, and it's accelerating, and uh, you're still, uh, it's still not mainstream, uh, but institutional investors have started to come in, uh, hence the price increase, uh, but also uh, mainstream, the first mainstream adoption is happening um, in Europe, uh, mainstream uh, delivery services, pizza delivery services, are, uh, are starting to accept this, eh? Um, and um, in, uh, in the US, um, what is the name? Shopify? I don't know the service, but I do know Spotify, uh, the, the great music service, but I don't know Shopify, but uh, apparently it's something that uh, it's also uh, quite big in the US and people shop and uh, Bitcoin is being uh, included. Uh, so the first mainstream uh, applications, because beforehand, okay, okay, Cupid, WordPress, the Pirate Bay, they also accepted Bitcoin donations, but or payments. But uh, but that's okay, mainstream. It's mainstream, but there are very few payments going on there. But now the past few weeks, you see that mainstream services that have a lot of payments going on daily, a lot of payments, start to accept it. So. So that in combination with institutional investors, like big boys, uh, plowing in a few million uh, each, um, or a few tens of millions, uh, all that, uh, and of course the Chinese, which I did not expect, but uh, the Chinese really go crazy uh, the past month and are a big part of the, of the rise. So actually this Chinese Bitcoin exchange is bigger in turnover, but also, like equally big in, in, in millions on the order book um, that uh, they want to buy. Um, so suddenly it's not just Europe and the US, suddenly it's China also basically bidding for the limited supply of Bitcoins. Eh? So this is accelerating and therefore um, I think that uh, you have, okay, you lost out eh, on, on amazing gains already, but um, uh, but there are still amazing gains ahead because uh, the current market cap of Bitcoin is around 5 billion, uh, but um, the potential is not uh, 500 billion, 
uh, which is the biggest company in the world, Apple. Uh, no, the potential is uh, to be equally big as uh, another currency such as the US dollar or the euro, which is not 500 billion, but 5,000 billion or 5 trillion. Eh? So uh, a currency has 10 times more potential than the biggest company in the world. And I think Bitcoin has a high chance to achieve that within the next five to 10 years. Um, a high chance, meaning it can fail totally, huh? but I estimate that only maybe 10% and 90% it's gonna happen. Huh? So, but that means going from five billion to a 5,000 billion, that's uh, a, still an increase, a, a thousand fold increase potential you have here. Huh? Um, and um, I think chances are actually high that we will see the biggest bubble in human history in Bitcoin because uh, we have long uh, talked about the tulip bubble, uh, the first uh, bubble in the West uh, that, uh, probably not the first, but one that spoke to people's minds for hundreds of years that happened in Holland in 1600. Um, people still talk about the tulip bubble, but the tulip bubble was something very local eh? in the Netherlands, which was the most prosperous country at the time, that's true, but still it's just one country. And um, uh, all the other bubbles we have seen um, have been um, actually pretty local. Uh, the last big bubble is the dot-com bubble, and um, that was basically a bubble in the West. Um, where the East did not participate. Uh, um, and uh, of course, then we have the real estate bubble. This indeed has been global, um, but um, this is something, um, there is so much real estate that uh, it's something of a different nature, nature. Of course, gold bubbles, uh, over the past few hundreds of years, it has happened, uh, Actually, those are the most global bubbles, eh? uh, the gold bubbles. Um, uh, but still, I mean, just in the 70s, the last gold bubble, um, it was also, there was so much less communication. Eh? It was even the gold bubble then, yes, it, it, it got mainstream. Eh? People bought gold in the bubble, it's true. But you know, the 70s is not today. In the 70s, there was still communism in the East. Eh? Uh, half of the world was not participating in the free market. Eh? Things have changed a lot since then. So I think there is a good chance that Bitcoin becomes a global bubble. If you look at the map where Bitcoin is being adopted and where people are running the Bitcoin client, this is truly a global phenomenon. Um, except Africa is not participating due to, eh, that will probably take, uh, because they are not developed yet. Eh? But in all the other regions, you can see that Bitcoin is being adopted. So I think um, um, fair valuation of Bitcoin is being valued comparable to the US dollar or the Euro um, within five to 10 years. But since this is, since the gains will be tremendous for so many people, uh, this will probably go into a mania where the valuation will become 10 times, even 50 times higher than it is proper. So if the fair valuation is $5 trillion, it is actually, there's a good chance it will go to $50 trillion, um, where uh, just the US dollar or the euro is just 5 trillion, Bitcoin will be valued 50 trillion. I think these are, uh, there is a very high chance for this to happen uh, within 10 years and, um, and uh, this will probably, and after that it will deflate, it will be mainstream, uh, but it will also deflate and lose 10 times its value, go back to 5,000 uh, billion instead of 50,000 billion. Uh, a lot of people losing a lot of capital, but uh, Bitcoin will be there for uh, probably uh, hundreds of years. 
and the Bitcoin bubble will be remembered for hundreds of years. So that's, I think, where we are going. Um, uh, the biggest threat, uh, governments clamping down on it and making it illegal, is diminishing by the day. Um, it's just the growth is going much quicker than governments can respond. This is just a, um, a vicious circle. Um, the higher it goes, the more people join. And... Um, uh, uh, and, and governments are powerless, uh, they can make it illegal, but it's just so absurd to do, because you will, um, uh, you will miss out on the biggest thing uh, happening in, in the global economy uh, uh, over the next uh, ten, 5 to 10 years. It's like making the internet illegal. You can do that, but it's just, it's just absurd for, it's too absurd for most politicians. To do so, except for the um, least advanced uh, societies where you have still a very top down structure. Uh, and uh, for example, Thailand uh, has for ma made it illegal Bitcoin. Eh? So it certainly can happen also in the West, uh, but um, I think chances are becoming lower by the day. I used to think that it would be 50 50, but today I'm starting to think like. It's not 50-50, it's only 10% chance that, that uh, an important government like the US, Germany or China will make this illegal. Huh? So, uh, so risks, in my opinion, are going down. Risks to invest in Bitcoin are going down. Um, the potential is also going down because the price is going up. But basically you get a really still the, a good deal. Risk is low, price is higher, but risk is lower, so, and the potential is still huge. Huh? Um, so, so yeah, I think it's, it's, it has never been wise to wait for a correction in Bitcoin land. Um, I think I have always advised to immediately when you make the click, when you see the potential, when you want to be part of, uh, when you want to own Bitcoins, that you do immediately a buy. But if you are of the opinion that it's probably going to correct, then okay, only buy half, keep the rest in cash, and um, maybe you will get an opportunity to buy more when it goes down. But the risk of missing out is much higher than the risk of losing money. Um, and of course, this only applies if you do not go all in. Eh? I think it is rational to risk a small percentage of your capital in Bitcoin simply because the potential is so high. Uh, the risk reward is still the most favorable of all possible investments. Um, so, 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 but even if you think that the risk is high, in contrast to me, I think the risk is low. But if you think the risk is high, even then, because the potential is high, and if you don't agree with that, then you, you're not making your calculations correct. Eh? We can disagree on the risk, okay? But even if you say the risk is high, the potential is high as well. Eh? That's a simple calculation. Eh? You just compare the potential of a currency to the US dollar or the euro, and, and that's the potential. Eh? So... So, even if you think the risk is high, a small allocation is justified. And I think it's ridiculous how many professional investors are still uh, advising against investing in Bitcoin. I think that it's not responsible and I think they will pay the price very quickly the coming years to basically lose their jobs. Because as an investor missing out on Bitcoin, uh, I mean, that's just, that's, that's going to be a disaster for your portfolio. Huh? Not in a disaster in losing money, a disaster in missing out on an amazing opportunity. Huh? So, so uh, uh, I have also changed my... Um, approach to investing 
as I have explained in the past videos, I did not want to balance anymore. Huh? And um, luckily, I, um, I did not do that anymore. I just keep a long position in Bitcoin. I'm not selling Bitcoins. Huh? And indeed, in one, two months, it has tripled in value. And I have all that gain. Huh? Because I didn't sell any Bitcoins. Hmm? If it goes uh, up uh, more, uh, tenfolding, if it hits $1,000, I'll probably lock in some more profits. I'll sell some Bitcoins, lock in some more profits into other investments. But, um, and then I will not average down because Bitcoin can fail. So if it goes to zero, I won't be buying Bitcoins, cheap Bitcoins. I will not do that. I will keep that profit in, that I took out. I will keep that in other investments so that if the Bitcoin fails, I will still have um, made money from that. Um, so, um, but my approach to investing is changing, especially the permanent portfolio. I'm really taking, um, I'm dumping that idea. Um, I think the permanent portfolio still performs a good function for a cash, cash position and every investor has a cash position. Um, but uh, it's if you just have a cash position on a savings account or uh, in physical cash or in um, in short-term bonds, that's just not uh, that's not wise uh, because it's losing so much purchasing power through inflation being around five percent per year. Uh, you lose five percent per year, uh, so that's not wise. And, uh, and, uh, and and what you do with the cash position is. You put it in in the permanent portfolio because you have stocks, gold, long and short term bonds, a proper mix, which has proven to be the most stable portfolio, but also going up on average with around 7% per year. So you keep your purchasing power. Eh? Okay, sometimes go down a year, then up, up more, eh? like this year down with minus 3%. Okay, that happens. Eh? But the down years are really acceptable huh? and the up years are uh, making up for it. So you still have an average of around 7% per year. I think that's a no-brainer for every cash, cash position one, once, one holds. Um, but, but I am not longer going to uh, lock in my profits into a permanent portfolio. Um, what I am going to do is... Um, I'm going to in invest um, part of the prof profits I take out of Bitcoin, for example. I'm going to put them in other great speculations. Huh? Because I think the permanent portfolio makes a crucial mistake. The permanent portfolio achieves safety by hedging everything. Huh? So because it has always 25% stocks, always 25% bonds, always 25% cash and always 25% gold, one goes up, the other one goes down, that means you're protected, but you don't make true profit, because there's always one destroying the profit from the other. Mm -hmm. So, but you can achieve safety in a different way also. If you have different great speculations, eh, and that means a, specu a good speculation is one that has a great risk reward ratio, meaning that uh, the potential reward must be high. Huh? You must be at least able to tenfold your capital, huh? uh, but the risk must be low. Huh? Uh, that's not easy to find, but there are, if you start looking, you will find them. Um, and so that nine in chances in ten, you're gonna make good money with this. Nine chances in ten. That's the best you can find. Bitcoin is a good speculation because nine chances in ten, you're gonna make good money. But there's still this one chance in ten that it totally fails. So if you put all your money in one great speculation, you have 10% chance to lose everything. So that's too much risk for me. But if you have different great speculations, each one having nine chances in 10 to go up and only one chance in 10 to 
lose out or lose everything, if you have different ones, then, then your chance to lose all your capital is actually very low. It's not 10%. It's much less than 10%, I don't know, but the more you have of them, the less it, it goes down to say, if you have four of them, uh, I don't know, the chance that you lose everything is 2% or something. Yeah? Uh, so, so that's actually uh, com becoming uh, almost as safe as the permanent portfolio, but you have much higher chance to make money because basically, if all of them, if only one in four great speculations succeeds, then you're tenfolding, 25%, and basically you doubled your capital, or tripled your capital, even if all the three others fail, huh? you have growth. Yeah? So, 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 so that's how the, the, the most successful investor in the world, Ray Dalio, um, with the biggest hedge fund in the world, that's how he invests. He has a, not just four, he has, I don't know, is it, it's more than 10, I don't know, 50 or something, uh, great speculations, but he keeps every great speculation at a small percentage, and uh, that way uh, he has uh, uh, succeeded in achieving uh, more profit than the biggest companies in the world huh, with his hedge fund. Um, so, so that's the secret to achieving safety and growth. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm currently looking at uh, stocks in Cyprus um, uh, who have uh, fallen by 98%, many companies being there uh, dramatically undervalued. Uh, um, and uh, I'm looking into that. So I'm gonna put some money into that. 5% of my capital, 10%, the same as I have done with Bitcoin at the time. And um, I will also look into um, the stocks in Iceland. They have doubled from the low in uh, 2008, but uh, they are still down uh, over 95%. Um, so I think there can probably be good speculations. Um, but I'm just going to start looking for them. And um, I think um, I'm going to look for safety that way. So, uh, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and uh, I'm, uh, if you have feedback uh, or if you have great speculation tips, please let me know. Uh, I'm very interested. And um, good luck.